but it's a very cool and exquisitely screamtacious, fangtalicious type film. I want you to stay put for it because we're getting ready to go into our double feature Vampire Assassins. Loneliness is a vice that crushes the heart. If you open your mouth and tell anyone about this, I will hunt you down and rip your throat out with my teeth. If I wasn't cleaning up messes of other vampires, I'd be a mess myself, ostracized by my clan, living on the street, or if I was lucky, in a blood den feeding off human blood cattle. I was born into privilege, a spoiled little brat, the child of a noble line of pure blood vampires belonging to the drag queen clan. My parents were vampires, as their parents were before them. Like most spoiled rich kids, discipline was not something they embraced. During my, what humans would consider teen years, I and a few friends would terrorize the Eastern European countryside, slaughtering dozens of innocent villagers and travelers unlucky enough to be traveling the roads when we were. As I grew older, I traveled Europe extensively, living a bohemian lifestyle. For a time, I was a frequent visitor of the Moulin Rouge, where I chased the green ferry with the elite of Paris. It was the only place to be in all of Europe. All wanted me, both as a muse and a lover. None could have me. Losing myself in the intoxicating milky green cloud, was one way of escaping from the responsibilities of adulthood. 
spoiled little me and her French groupies. I hated myself and the stupor I was always in. But the sprite kept beckoning me to swim in the Bouillard Vert. I stayed in Paris, outliving my friends and devouring strangers, until the clouds of war started brewing. The time of the great exodus. Many drug wolves sensed that there would be decades of war and strife at the beginning of the 20th century. So in the interest of our people's survival, the majority of my clan made the trek across the sea. Some stayed to keep the clutus contained in the British Isles. I went to Cuba for a few years, then settled in New York. The mountains of the Adirondacks reminded me of home. They were beautiful, yet haunting. I traveled all over the region, feeding on the loggers and trappers at times, then settling in places such as Lake Placid and Montreal. The culture of Montreal enthralled me. It was a magnet for European vampires at that time. During the Great War in World War II, a number of vampires went back home when it was learned how devastating these wars were. I stayed, but I needed a change. I needed to grow, to stop being the carefree child who would kill and devour five lovers in a night. But I couldn't. Centuries of undisciplined, unbridled murder was ingrained in my spoiled little mind. So I moved back to the U.S. and took up residence in the town of Cherub Falls, outside Albany, to start a new life and lose the desire to gorge myself. It sickened me in more ways than one. There are two types of known vampires, purebloods and converts. Converts are humans who are bitten and have become vampires. Converts are usually accidental, victims who didn't die from a feeding pureblood. They're also humans who have a mistaken belief in the romantic mystique of what a vampire actually is. They usually befriend a pureblood who wants to use them as blood cattle, but somehow escapes. The problem was that most converts are undisciplined, attracting attention to themselves attacking, mauling, even feasting on their victims in plain sight of the public. My job was to clean up the mess. The media started having a feeding frenzy. When they referred to the attackers as psychotics, we didn't take much notice. When the media and victims started using labels like zombie and werewolf, it got our attention. When they started using the word vampire, the elders became concerned. You have drawn too much attention to our people. For far too long, we've turned a blind eye to your disregard for our sacred laws of non-exposure. No amount of clout which your family may wield can protect you. The seriousness of your actions warrants punishment. You will be outcast. No member of our clan will acknowledge your existence. You will be dead to us unless you pay a price. There's a growing number of humans who are converting to vampirism. And they are feasting in full view of other humans. Thank you. And it has caused a problem. The humans are starting to believe we exist. We have decided that you will eliminate this problem. In three days, a package will be delivered to you with instructions. If you accept it, you can win your way back into our good graces. Reject it, and I cannot believe you're allowing her to kill members of her own clan. If we don't, then the millennia we have spent in anonymity will have been for nothing. Tell me again, Julius, why must we remain anonymous? Don't patronize me. We would be slaughtered to extinction. Which is why I must insist we maintain the population numbers of our people and the other allied clans. I have reports that the Clutus are- I know about your reports. 
I may be old, but I'm not blind. And don't ever doubt my loyalty to our species. Ah, and speaking of timpstresses and vampires and the lot, let's uh, take a little look right down here. Excuse me, not, not at vampires. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm actually trying to fish this little gizmo up right here. One of our, our um, games that we have here on exhibit. This is called Vampire Hunter Game. Oh my goodness, and it, it has screeching sounds, and the cards, and board games, and it, it's a, a quite an interesting and challenging little uh, game to play on those wonderful creepy nights when you have very little else to do outside, and you have, you'd like to do some hunting, but you can't, so it bones you up, or hones you up, you might say, and uh, maybe this will get us also started into our second feature a little bit later down the road, hmm? Anyway, it's enough holding you up with this. It's called The Vampire Hunter. If you get a chance to stop in at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, our home here in Claudeville, Virginia, on Highway 103, stop in and say hello. I'd like to see some of your games and some of your exhibits. Maybe even stop and play a little while, huh? We can play a Vampire Hunter together, huh? So I did what was told of me. I gave up my bohemian lifestyle and dressed as they did, most of the time. What's this? How have you been? Good. I missed you. Missed you too. Man, am I ready tonight. Oh yeah? I'm gonna go for the record tonight. Not five, not ten. I'm gonna go for my personal best of 25 kills tonight. 25? Don't you think that's a bit much? No, it's a challenge. So, where do you want to go? Let's try the north end and uh, make our way south. Sounds good. You know, I've been thinking. I'm sort of interested in getting a blood servant, convert a human for myself. Not as blood cattle, really, but someone to do things that I don't feel like doing at the moment. Like shopping, doing some laundry, cleaning the apartment. I was like, what, 15, 16 when I was bitten? I'm sure I can find a young...
I disposed of the body in a nearby river, then called a few friends to have my car towed to the shop. Yes, there are vampire tow truck operators out there. I just murdered my friend because he was a nuisance to the clan elders, and I needed to suck up to them. The hell with it. I can't complain. It's a job, a source of income, and as a perk, a source of food. <laughs> Pain's a bitch. It especially hurts when your heart is broken and you're nursing two broken ribs. and a punctured lung. It's been a long time, Maria. We miss you. How goes the hunting? Why didn't you tell me about them? You knew what they did to my family. You knew that they existed. I knew they existed, but... Oh, good heavens, Maria. What have you done to yourself? I didn't do it. They did it. Every waking moment of my days, I think of new ways to eradicate them. They're in my head, Father! And I can't get them out until every single one of them are dead. Child. I hear my family begging. I go to their graves. Maria, listen to yourself. You're, you're delirious. You're exhausted. You're. Oh, Stop this. I vowed to never look back and never regret what I had done. It was for the best. It was for my clan. I had to prepare my heart for a life of loneliness. The problem with this assignment was that there was to be no witnesses, most of the time.
Have you enjoyed tonight's double feature, The Temptress and Vampire Assassin, by those wonderful independent filmmakers? I hope you have, because I most certainly have enjoyed showing them and watching them with you. And we want to thank the makers of those films for allowing us to, to, to view them and to share them with you and each and everybody that has a moment to sit down to watch Monster Movie Night with yours truly, Bobby Gam Monster. And until next time, keep screaming. Mm -hmm.